Hi, I'm Chris Naniga with Swift Otter, and you're viewing a video that's part of our free preview of our upcoming Magento 101 course. This is a course that's custom tailored for you if you're completely new to Magento and Adobe Commerce and is going to provide a crucial foundation to walk you through the most critical aspects of development on the platform. So I hope you find the content in this video useful and stay tuned for the release of the full course. Now we are going to dive into the topic of layout update XML files. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is how they're named. We have our uh, layout file currently in our code right here in the view directory in layout called catalog product view XML. And this name is magic. So it, so it is by the exact file name of a layout update file that Magento determines exactly what page it applies to. So we want to spend a little time talking about how do we match a particular page that we're on, the URL of that page. How do we match that to a file name? How do we figure out what file name uh, we need to use in a layout file to make changes to the layout of that page. Uh, to do that, we're going to start with an example that's a little simpler than the product detail page. Um, so if you have, uh, if you've not yet created a customer account on the front end of your store and you want to follow along here, uh, go ahead and register a customer account because I'm going to go to my account here and then view one of the sub pages in my account, uh, like orders here. Uh, let's look at the URL pattern that we have on this page. Uh, so on, on this page, we are at sales slash order slash history. And you're pretty much going to find this pattern of three URL segments on, on pretty much any URL uh, on the site with some notable exceptions. And we'll talk about how those work later. Uh, but uh, basically, even when you have fewer segments, you really have three segments. Like uh, at the root uh, page of my account here, we see that our uh, that our segments are simply customer account. Uh, but even when there's two like that, there's actually always an implied third segment, which is index. So if there's not another segment, um, the segment is index. You can see that if I if I literally explicitly browse to customer account index, I get the same page. Uh, the same thing is true of uh, checkout. So if I if I place a product in my cart and go to the checkout, uh, the the uh, URL path is simply checkout, but the implied URL path is checkout index index, uh, just like that. Uh, so we're pretty much always going to find uh, that three segment pattern in our URL paths. And just as another note about that, let's go back to my orders here. Uh, even uh, even when I have more segments, uh, not not only fewer but more, we're still looking at the same pattern because when I view an order here, I I am at sales slash order slash view, and we have more URL segments here. But as is probably kind of apparent from from the content of those segments, uh, these really are data parameters uh, in in the URL. So we have the next segment is order ID and then an actual ID value. Uh, in the end, in the routing system, those end up getting those, those key value pairs of, of each, all the successive segments, uh, end up getting passed in as if they were query string, uh, query string parameters. So three segments to every URL. Uh, you might be thinking that looks awfully uh, similar to our catalog product view uh, name of our layout file here. And so you might guess uh, that sales order view XML would be the right layout file uh, to, to effect changes on this page. And you would be right, but there's a little caveat here, a little possible wrinkle that I want to make sure you're aware of just so you don't end up beating your head against a wall uh, if, if, you, if you might have the, uh, the conditions that create this wrinkle for you at some point. Uh, let's find where the the route that translates this URL to an actual controller is defined. Uh, so for this, we're going to look, uh, we're going to go to the vendor directory here because we're looking for core code here in Magento. And we're going to look at the sales module, which uh, doubtless is going to be where we'll find the route definition for uh, for those sales related URLs. So in the sales module here, we have, it's probably no surprise, another XML configuration file that's involved with configuring routes this routes XML file in the front end directory. Uh, this is where routing starts. So a, a routes file, uh, 
is uh, nested, the, the content in here is nested within a router. Uh, so there's there's different router classes that can have different logic for how uh, how a request is processed and translated into a response. Uh, Front-end web pages use the standard router. And so um, for, for pretty much all routes that you're gonna end up creating for, for front-end pages, this is the one that you're going to use. And the standard router matches routes and their front name uh, to, to controller files. Uh, so this, this route that's defined here for sales has a front name called sales. And that is how, that's how the initial matching is done. So all these, uh, all these sales related URLs that we were on, uh, sales order history and sales order view, that's the first URL segment. Uh, and that is what's referred to as the front name. So that's, that kind of has a special, uh, special status, the first URL segment um, as the front name that ends up matching a route. And then from there, this is basically telling Magento to look in this module that's declared here for controller files that match the rest of the URL. We, we will look more at, at that later when we're creating our own controller. Uh, but the reason that we're looking at this route file is because I want to take note here that the route has both an ID and a front name. And they're the same in this case, but they can be different. And the thing I want to note is that first segment of the XML file that matches the page actually is the route ID. Uh, so, so we could, let's say we had, uh, we, let's say we had a different ID here for this route. Uh, the, the URL that we'd be browsing to would still be sales order history with the sales front name that would match to this route. Uh, but in fact, the, the, the layout file names that we would expect, or the, the file name we would expect for this, for this particular URL pattern, sales order history, the layout file name that we would expect to find the relevant uh, layout instructions would in fact be sales routes underscore order underscore history. You're really not going to find that anywhere in the core code. Thankfully, uh, you can keep your sanity most of the time because uh, virtually all IDs are identical to front names, but it's just an important distinction to be aware of. Again, if you find yourself in an unanticipated scenario where you're just not uh, landing on the right layout file name, you want to check the route ID as well as the front name. So that's the typical sleuthing process you can usually use for uh, what do I need to name my layout file to affect a certain page. Typically, these first three URL segments uh, are, are they're more or less going to match the file name that you need to implement. In this case, sales order history. Uh, now that that uh, pattern that uh, that translates to a layout file name is called a layout update handle, and uh, this is the most common kind that you will work with. Uh, the, the layout update handle that matches the URL pattern or the route pattern. Uh, but there are other layout update handles that end up getting applied to a particular page. One that's particularly relevant, for instance, uh, let's look down here in the uh, theme module, which defines some initial building blocks for the theme. Uh, and if we look in the, the view directory, front end layout, uh, here's a file called default XML. Uh, so default is a layout update handle that does pretty much what you'd expect. Any layout updates implemented here apply to all pages on the site. And this is where the initial building blocks for layout uh, exist. You'll find if you search for uh, default XML uh, throughout the system, there's plenty of modules implementing uh, layout files with that name to implement changes that are universal to all pages on the site. And you can use default XML as well. Uh, so what's happening when a controller is executed, when, when the layout system is executed, is Magento is uh, applying, it's, it's, it's uh, applying the default layout update handle to any request that comes in, then deriving uh, the, the page specific layout update handle to apply. Just putting those together in a list saying we're going to load all layout update files with those names and then merge all the resulting XML together. That's how we get the kind of final uh, layout structure that applies to a particular page. Uh, so that's two examples of layout update handles. And there can be all kinds of layout update handles. They can they can be arbitrary uh, because uh, controllers can, uh, can explicitly apply layout update handles to a page. Even um, some layout files can apply other layout update handles to a page that can be used uh, to conveniently kind of encapsulate some layout that's common to groups of pages. I'll give you an example of what I mean here. 
Um, so in the customer module, we have a layout file called customer account XML. And remember, the, the main kind of home my account screen actually matches the layout update handle customer account index. It's those three URL segments. Uh, so that is not what this is. This is just an arbitrarily named uh, layout update handle. But if we look in most of the files in here, we see this little this little note here, update, giving the handle customer account. So that's basically saying uh, when when this uh, when this layout file is parsed, uh, it's basically saying we have another handle that we're going to throw in here. Also load any layout files related to that handle, uh, and you can kind of see what that's being used here for layout updates that. Uh, should be relevant to all pages in the my account section instead of repeating those again and again in the uh, in the individual uh, layout files that correspond to individual pages we're encapsulating all those uh, all those in one file and then we can we use that handle ability to to flexibly apply that to other pages so that's the concept of layout update handles again the most common ones that you're going to be dealing with are default for uh, layout updates that affect all pages and then the the update handle that matches the URL uh, but you can use update handles in all kinds of ways so now that we're armed with all this knowledge of how uh, how URLs are translated into layout update handles uh, we should be able to figure out how we got to the uh, the file name that we're using for the product detail page if we browse to the product detail page let's see what we find this is our URL path Montana wind jacket for the product that I'm viewing. So this basically blew out everything we just learned about how URL paths uh, translate to layout update handles. Uh, except under the hood, there actually is the same pattern going on. So product pages, category pages, and CMS pages implement URL rewrites so that we can have nice semantic, descriptive, SEO-friendly URL paths for these pages. Uh, this is based on a, a URL code that's attached to the to the data for this product. Uh, and under the hood, there's a rewrite going on as Magento is, is processing the request, rewriting this to a more predictable real URL path. Uh, so it's for those three kinds of pages that that happens. If we look in the database here, if you just want to get a glimpse of this, there's a URL rewrite table. These get auto-generated when products and categories and pages are created. And we can see all the examples that we have in here, rewriting uh, a certain request path to a, a target path. And we can see very clearly that that products are getting rewritten to this pattern: uh, catalog, product, view. Uh, categories get rewritten to this pattern, and CMS pages get rewritten to that pattern. Um, so, so that's something you need to keep in mind. I mean, this might seem like a lot of detective work, but honestly, you're going to get very familiar with uh, with these layout update handles: catalog, product view, catalog, category view. Uh, you're not really likely to forget what those handles are uh, for those pages. So, just as a review here, uh, when we have a particular URL path, we have uh, a f uh, three URL segments that include a front name and then two more segments, and those are going to be matched to a route and uh, and match a layout update handle that is the route ID followed by those same two segments. And usually, front name and route ID are are the same. And then you just want to keep in mind that uh, that we have these classes of rewritten URLs uh, for products, categories, and CMS pages, and and the the URL segments that you see here. Those are the uh, real paths that will translate to a layout update handle for those. So uh, now that we have uh, a little bit of knowledge about how how URLs are translated to layout update paths uh, or layout update handles, uh, and we can be confident of why we chose a certain name for the product detail page, we're finally ready to talk about the actual structure of layout XML.